Well, I'm going to have had direct and indirect consequences for Bangladesh. It highlights the good, the exciting, and exasperating aspects of diplomacy. I'd like to very shortly introduce our esteemed panel of discussants for this publication ceremony. The panel shall consist of Honorable Ambassador Barak Sohan, former Foreign Secretary of Bangladesh and former President of Bangladesh Enterprise Institute. Honorable Ambassador Dr. M. Afsar al Khader, former Ambassador and High Commissioner of Bangladesh to Kenya and Indonesia. Dr. Amina Mohsin, Professor at Dhaka University in the Department of International Relations. Dr. Shahab Inam Khan, Professor at Johannine Nauru University in the Department of International Relations. And Honorable Mr. Ambassador Ryan Kuti, a career diplomat of Bangladesh since 1975. He served as Bangladesh Ambassador to Thailand and Cambodia and High Commissioner, Commissioner to India prior to becoming the Foreign Secretary in 2005. He has also authored another book by the name A Neighborly Affair, Assignment India, also published by University Press Limited. I'd like to extend our thanks to the Founder President of Gregorian Alumni Club, Mr. Shahidullah Azim, for being a part of this event. I humbly request you to deliver your welcome speech. Honorable Ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you all on behalf of the Alumni Club. I am very extremely glad for having the opportunity, opportunity to go even that both that COVID this event and also I would like to thank congratulate Mr. Namaskar, Ambassador, the author of the book Diplomacy in Obscurity. He is our iconic Gregorian. <laughs> I would also like to thank University Press Limited for publishing. This uh, informative and knowledge based book. I'd like to uh, thank again our ambassador, the chairman to be, the question, or in fact, all is to our staff for any event, he is to uh, come to us at every time. Whenever we need him, he always talks. Uh, so I hope Mr. Ambassador will uh, continue his practice for our next generation, which will be really helpful. Uh, many guests and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We shall now move forward into the evening with lively, meaningful, and in-depth conversation and discussion of the book. I humbly request Honorable Ambassador Dr. M. Absalo Father to begin the conversation and discussion of diplomacy, obscurity, and memoir. <laughs>
This is regarding the going to launch this afternoon. So before I speak, I'd like to draw your attention to the left side, to the to the front cover of the book. It is so nicely done, so thoughtfully done. Whoever has done it, uh, do. Regards to him, you will see. And <coughs> see obscurity, very obscure. It is basically drawn in brick words. And then comes the, the main thing of diplomacy, which is how you play <coughs> your. They are born in the chess pool. The man is the actually horse here. He is a foreign secretary or an ambassador, high, commi high commissioner in India. Basically, an unknown factor. He is not like any other form. His movements are not predictable. It's two and a half. He is to only observe when he is actually outpouring his feelings. What it could be, you have to make your own thing. It's very nice this time. The figure has not been right here, his memory or other feelings. Flowing easy English language would have been writing very good books. You, but he is so creative that he would be busy. Unless he is engaged himself in reminiscing his work as a diplomat or any other thing. Good writing, good books. So, and he's very good at it. Let me, once you do, let me take uh, what I feel about as a commentary on this book. It's a brief critique. On the memoir and career of Ambassador in my very reluctant diplomat by his own words. Um, if you are here to read the, um, the book, and it is admitted in his second. How, despite being a reluctant diplomat, he was so successful as a diplomat to reach the pinnacle of his service. One must take a loving and caring interest to go through the book itself. It is a broad story, broad story of one's one diplomat's joy and pleasure in his daily channel as present to him by his superiors or by policy makers or by his destiny. It is as if every day, every new day is filled with promises of happiness, a new experience of unforgettable nature. Because he has written it in such a glowing <coughs> language that you can almost read the whole book of Florida last pages in the one book. Here one must do well to remember a simple fact of life, rather that of international relations. It is that if a shard, a shard, in its childhood is that deep in a fish pond or an aquarium, 
big size, let us say 20 images of them, it could never expect to grow with natural size of eight. So, in the tank. So, for the development of Bangladesh, all the talented or brilliant PAs would never be a Kissinger or even Richard Albert of Bosnia. <coughs> that is initially an ordained feat of any Bangladesh diplomat, however, it is PAs. I'm not talking about the internal bickerings they put in the in the in the top that for itself. As probably is a qualifier in diplomacy in obscurity. This becomes self evident to become meaningful and a discerning man to any discerning leader. To begin with, <coughs> his book is honorably dedicated to the late publisher, Mr. Mohidin Allah, very correctly, very correctly, definitely, as a homage to a great and distinguished gentleman and his worthy successor, Maru Islota, Maru Kamala, who have not hesitated since 1970 or to introduce any local, local author to the readers of the world for exposing them to Bangladesh situation and development efforts. Our material, meritorious or not so meritorious, they are. The book has 20 chapters, of which five years is filled with author's narrative of his own background. And the parameter, the scope of operation, national policy preferences, and the global setting to a plain but not so, not to an esoteric extent. I'm sorry, I, my language is not very good because I'm not one. So you have to forgive me and bear with me. Uh, each ch chapter begins with an appropriate scholarly quote, which encapsulates the contents of the entire chapter and its direction. It speaks of the writer's command <coughs> over the narrative itself, its direction, and likely end. Eight and probably nine chapters have chronicled the author's Indian experience where he was posted twice, once as a junior, junior diplomat and another as a high commissioner of Bangladesh. These, to me, appear to be a faithful and classic diplomatic observation, observations on the contemporary and name about characterization of our formidable neighbor and its policy makers ordinary bureaucrats, important creators and politicians. The presentation appears to me more in many of the British Raj and its operational methodology, save its fairness and liberality than the generosity and cultural affinity of the and the conscious cultural affinity of the locals or their predecessors or their ancestors, even as far as back as that of great Ashoka, who is famous, though his famous Trimurti has been taken as the symbol of the Hindu Raj. The Buddhist enlightened philosophy of Ashoka is a rare phenomenon of the post-British Raj period, as is, as the real, as is the real extent of Buddhism in its land of birth. If you want to read more about it, I would refer you to the author's the first book that is Enable the Affair, a Simultaneous. 
ambassadors, Emma Putin, a truck even challenging Moscow as an obstacle, no matter Robert's possible range or ranges of operating there. His multilateral experience as Director General International Organization and Director General United Nations in the Ministry, Independent Ministry, prepared him to a great and considerable extent for his later role in the OIC, which to my uh, experience is as good as the famous or infamous Arab League, one of the oldest regional organizations of the contemporary world. In any case, one may see this year's performance in the helpless center of the state of Arab or Islam unity. Presence present to today. To, in any case, one may see this its today's operation in solving modern issues and conflict and role in the multilateral field where it is seen as creating more dissension than promoting any unified Islamic point of view. Fifty-seven countries of the OIC have no permanent members in the Security Council. The body with a substantial negative power in the running of world affairs. Whether it can be described as a blessing than a liability, which Islamic countries have yet to do, I mean to your and readers' judgment. Overall, since we are one of the 193 members, global countries of the human, and not the center of the world, as we some sometimes or generally think to piss our own people in the world. I would leave it to the reader's judgment again to consider the author's experience of any utility to his mother than. Finally, I thank the author for giving us a quality narrative, hard facts of life, and one memoir is approach of a story is almost poetic and easily understand the English song stress the strain of daily technology. This can always be used as a reference point of great historic and daily value future technology in a peripheral or substantial form in the overall context of technology of Bangladesh for policies of ultimate and headquarters and elsewhere as observed in Bangladesh's last years experience. I thank you very much for listening to my very presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We will now officially launch the book. I call upon Ms. Mark Mohidin, Managing Director of UPL, for the book and beauty. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm, uh, since the Ambassador Akhtar um, Talib would have to leave soon, we decided to launch the book before Noah are here. And it is really an honor uh, for us to have uh, with us today uh, uh, Dr. Gawar Rizvi, Honorable Advisor to Prime Minister, um, Honorable Minister uh, of the of Planning, Mission, uh, Planning Ministry, um, Mr. Emir Mannan, and uh, Chief Minister, um, Honorable, Honorable Minister, <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> I apologize, I'm saying that. Congratulations, also. Uh, may I also request you to uh, join us uh, in the unveiling of the book, uh, uh, along with the discussions today. And uh, of course, uh, Madam Zima uh, Chama, uh, Mrs. Maiduddin, uh, who have been a very uh, key part of 
of, of the making of this book. Uh, please may I invite you uh, to the stage to join us and uh, just have a photo op before we go into the uh, remaining discussion. Thank you. And uh, also, former State Minister, uh, Mr. Abdul Santosri, would like you to join us here as well. As a chapter on uh, the recent developments in, in Myanmar, and uh, I suppose we could all agree that uh, uh, the final outcome of uh, the Rohingya problem uh, uh, still remains a big question mark as we have been observed by Imar in his book. Uh, one issue uh, I have with uh, the book is that the chapters uh, are not uh, uh, sequential in terms of his career. So, uh, uh, he talks about uh, uh, different uh, parts of his career. Uh, so, uh, China comes uh, late uh, in the book, whereas, in fact, uh, it uh, preceded uh, his postings uh, in Thailand and uh, where he was in Thailand, he relegated to Cambodia. Uh, which uh, I think of a very interesting uh, chapter on Cambodia was his. Uh, Meeting with the flamboyant king uh, uh, of Cambodia at the time, Prince Siano. Which brought back uh, memories. I don't know whether Nuat uh, uh, is aware of the fact that I too was related to uh, the government of Prince uh, Siano. Except in my case, it was while I was serving in his last year in China. Uh, and whereas he presented credentials uh, in the uh, Royal Palace in Phnom Penh, uh, I presented credentials to Siano in some forest, uh, reportedly in Cambodia, but uh, one had to be sure they were going. Whether one was inside Cambodia or inside Thailand at that time. But, uh, uh, to Sihanamu's uh, uh, credit, uh, uh, the developing of the Thailand and uh, his uh, usual flourish and flamboyance. Uh, he makes an interesting contrast uh, between uh, uh, Sihanamu and uh, the late king of Thailand, uh, 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 the uh, uh, two opposite ends of the pole in the Thailand. Uh, 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 I had the pleasure of meeting uh, countless times uh, because virtually uh, for the entire <coughs> year that I was last uh, in Beijing, uh, he was a resident uh, uh, in Beijing, uh, which uh, extended to him uh, the galaxy of 
Not only that, uh, but uh, it was also uh, uh, very, uh, I would say, uh, important and regular visit uh, in Norway, which uh, is also mentioned uh, briefly in uh, my uh, book. <clears throat> Without question, the most uh, important uh, chapter is in book B, uh, refer to Himalayas uh, stay in, in Washington. And, and I find it uh, particularly interesting uh, because since uh, my own retirement more than 22 years ago, uh, I have been spending an average of uh, three months, uh, in the case of this year, it was six months in Washington, so uh, I can relate to a lot of things uh, mentioned in the book. In particular, uh, uh, his uh, rather detailed analysis of how Washington works and uh, how tough it is uh, uh, for uh, Bangladeshi diplomat uh, to make his presence felt. So, uh, as Hamad mentions in his book, uh, uh, he found, uh, which I think is, is one of the key uh, ways of, of making an impact uh, in Washington. Uh, he found not one, uh, but a number of ways of, of doing this. Uh, and doing it not as an ambassador, but uh, as a senior diplomat, I think he was a counselor and then was promoted to the rank of uh, minister. Uh, by uh, religiously and, and energetically cultivating the congressional aides of uh, uh, senators and, and, and congressmen. Uh, because what you do discover in Washington is that, with very few exceptions, uh, the overwhelming majority of congressmen and senators rely entirely on their aides. So if you can influence the aides, uh, who also like the speeches for the congressmen and senators, uh, then uh, nine-tenths of the battle is won. <clears throat> But he does make the point that, uh, uh, and I think it's an important point, uh, that you have to entertain them lavishly. Uh, you can't just uh, uh, give them uh, a hamburger and hope that uh, they're going to become lifelong friends. Uh, uh, around Congress, uh, there are some uh, uh, very fancy restaurants and you're required uh, to take them there and, and uh, uh, give them a good meal and uh, also in the process uh, have something to say that will grab their attention. I think that's another very important feature of uh, making an impact because Washington has uh, 180 embassies. Bangladesh is one of them. And they're all running after the same people, uh, the diplomats. So why should they single out uh, Bangladesh for special attention? So that needs legwork and hard work. And you might uh, put in a lot of legwork and hard work, and it's all there in, in his book. Uh, but he made some other very useful Contacts. Uh, one of them, uh, in fact, uh, remains a close friend of his uh, to this day, uh, Bob Hathaway, uh, who after selling his important uh, national aid, uh, joined the Brixton Center and uh, was head of their Asia program. I myself met Bob uh, a number of times. He is, uh, in fact, uh, uh, a very good, uh, uh, what I would call, uh, introduction to the book. 
Oh. And uh, I want to read from it because in a sense uh, that pretty much captures uh, uh, my own feelings. Uh, uh, so Bob Hathaway uh, writes uh, that the author is a friend of mine, it's an honor I cherish. I have learned much from the United Ladies Society. First, I had the pleasure of working with him more than a quarter century ago. In my case, I think it's 45 years ago. Uh, I have learned much more about him and about the rewards and the limitations of the life in diplomacy. My reading is If you have a passion for international affairs, if you enjoy a fast pace in the ground, behind the scenes <coughs> that has shaped our history or simply if you appreciate the good yarn then this is a book you will want to read. <coughs> so let me uh, echo those uh, sentiments and urge you to read this, this book. Uh, the chapters on India are also interesting uh, because uh, I would venture to say that uh, India is in more ways than one, uh, one of the most uh, challenging uh, assignments uh, for any foreign diplomat at whatever level. Uh, so, uh, I have initially served there as a middle level uh, diplomat and then went back, uh, served there as high commissioner uh, before coming back to Dhaka. Uh, uh, one of the things which you, uh, which can hide in, uh, in a sense, uh, empathize with, uh, is uh, that in India, and you may find this surprising to hear, there really are very few people you come across in India who really know Bangladesh. So one of the challenges in, in India is really trying to get them to know what Bangladesh is all about. If Bangladesh is not, as uh, my points of the country, uh, to be treated lightly or with condescension, uh, but Bangladesh is an important player uh, in the region, and I would go so far as to say, you. Uh, but in order to get that message across, uh, again, it requires hard work, and you run into a fair amount of resistance uh, uh, from the NEA, and in particular, uh, the Indian media. Yeah. And, and my writes about uh, uh, how tough it is uh, to handle. Uh, the Indian media uh, in uh, uh, during his assignment and I can uh, echo those sentiments having uh, served uh, So uh, all in all it's, it's an interesting book. Uh, I do have a, a few, you might say, uh, complaints. Uh, I would have liked him uh, to be more uh, uh, critical of some of the people he uh, worked with, uh, some of the people he served with. Uh, he does uh, make, a, I would say, a quasi-critical comment about one of his ambassadors that he served under in, in Washington. Uh, and uh, I don't know if, whether you remember him, uh, but uh, I uh, was invited also by Ambassador Humayun Kabir on one of my periodic visits to Washington to dinner. And uh, and it was exactly as you describe it in your book. Uh, the guests were invited for 7 o'clock. Uh, Ambassador Humayun Kabir loved to cook. So he would spend uh, a lot of his time in the kitchen. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, the guests would be shown some videos. And dinner would be served uh, at 10 o'clock if you were lucky. I think uh, that was certainly the time when uh, 
uh, we got our dinner and for the Americans, I mean, uh, this is almost a punishable act to invite them at 7 and then not feed them till 10 and then to show them some uh, videos uh, of themselves <laughs> in the hill uh, This was, I think, well beyond their terms of reference for an enjoyable evening. <laughs> So I don't know uh, to what extent uh, Omayun uh, made friends rather than lose friends uh, uh, through his uh, entertainment uh, uh, in the style to which uh, was in some ways unique to him. <clears throat> but uh, so I would have liked uh, him to be more candid about uh, some of his others. Uh, but he is a, a person of a fairly uh, generous disposition. Uh, he usually has only kind words to, to say. Uh, he did criticize uh, two uh, engineers uh, uh, who uh, came close to torpedoing a gift from the Dutch government. And apparently they did so without instructions from home. And Himayat and his ambassador had worked very hard to undo the damage that these two engineers had done. But he doesn't mention their names, so he is being very diplomatic in that sense. So uh, let me conclude by congratulating Himayat on, on a very good book. Uh, I did tell him that uh, uh, one of the results of reading his book is that I now feel very tempted to produce uh, uh, my own memoirs, uh, uh, except I'd like to uh, be more candid and, and uh, I'm not sure that at the end of the day would uh, make me any friends. Uh, it may end up with my losing the few friends I have. So I'll put that on hold for the time being. Congratulations, Ramat, and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next we have Dr. Shalina Khan, Professor at Gandhina University from the Department of International Relations. Sir, I request you to further proceed with the discussion of the book. Uh, thank you very much. It's, a, it's a definitely a pleasure and honor to be a part of this gathering uh, and to be a part of the book, book launching uh, of Ambassador Nirmaiduddin's uh, book titled Diplomacy and Security. And as an academic, I feel a treat to review this book, which I believe has not only an academic merit, but also has a historic merit for the people who practices international relations and who intends to understand the past, present, the present, and the future of Bangladesh's diplomacy and international affairs, not only within the regional terms, but also in the international or beyond the regional terms. What is fascinating coming from Ambassador Suman uh, is the entire ecosystem. Diplomat has to go through over this decade, which often uh, not really perceived by the multiple actors who pushes this entire ecosystem beyond the traditional facts of what we understand in political or economic terms. And that's where I think this book adds a substantial matter, even when uh, Ambassador Suman mentioned as well within the book, definitely. Uh, talking about the families, talking about investment, how the families are really related to investment, talking about security and how the bargaining chips are being made and what are the role of the bargaining chips. I'm talking like a completely academic for sure. Uh, there is a question about uh, the continuity within the international uh, affairs, which eventually really affects Bangladesh's foreign policy, as Ambassador Subhan has also mentioned that what he has seen in, in Washington, what Ambassador Hermann has seen in Washington, 
And these are the historical camps that our next generation uh, diplomats must understand and revisit. There is a question of uh, many questions that we often uh, don't get answered directly. One question I was quite fascinated when I looked into the issue of Tata investment, for example. I mean, why Tata investment didn't really take place in Tata? And Ambassador reminded me in the way his first-hand experience of the elaborating of this book actually gives you a first-hand reference to many of the questions that a lot of people will be asking in the coming years, not only in terms of our digital relationship, but also in understanding investment regimes and portfolio that we have missed or perhaps we should not miss in future. And I think this is one important uh, aspect of the book that the diplomats, economists, and political economists, and definitely the politicians should take a note of. There is a question about the Myanmar when Ambassador and I dealt with Myanmar. Gave a lot of food, of food for pop, of food for pop for us and perhaps when we looked into the Rohingya issue, where he mentioned that, that the current state of Rohingya issue, the history, and perhaps his dealing with the Burmese diplomats is perhaps something that the current generation uh, diplomats should take a note of, because that's how you prepare yourself, building up the past institutional memories, and then building up your present capabilities and think about what should be your future response to you. There's a question about uh, or, or perhaps the references about multiple forms of political parties that are shaping uh, the part policy of Bangladesh that we often don't understand in the public domain. Perhaps this is something very, very important, not for the diplomats, but for the politicians too. And even if you look at uh, Ambassador Hermit uh, Dean's visits or, uh, or perhaps his tenure in Benelux, so where he had to to really deal with the socialist and Christian democrats, police, and then of course Thomas Poe has been mentioned, and as it is, so Han has elaborated on that, the national breakfast prayers and stuff like that. How these are essential in shaping uh, Bangladesh's foreign policy has highlighted, has been highlighted. But now I think these are very small issues, but essential issues that significantly uh, changes. In and in fact restructures Bangladesh's foreign relations and foreign relations responses. Even when we look at the uh, first hand references related to Iraq and the Gulf War, as Mr. Suman has mentioned about Venezuela's the mammal, but there is also an important factor that Bill Milam and the Southeast and other ambassadors putting pressure on Bangladesh uh, to have some sort of coordinated response. Now, when you talk about coordinated response, one hand you are expecting military political response, but on the other hand, you have the domestic response. Now, that's exactly where you often see this continuity more continuity, perhaps. And perhaps this is where a lot of us, many of us, should really focus on and go back to a and really have a deeper engagement find out that what exactly shaped this public policy, that what exactly helped us in coming to different kinds of conclusions, can we really learn from that and look into uh, the present state of international affairs and where we can uh, really place this expertise, value and expertise. There is also an important factor that came out in the United Nations where uh, we place the terror, and I think this is a phenomenon. <coughs> Whenever you go to the United Nations, you see Bangladesh's territory being played. And this is something that Bangladesh has invested, not only for the current regimes or past regimes, perhaps for the generations to come. And this is where the diplomacy is really lies. And it is not only for maximizing the present, but also to ensure that the present is visible and alive in the future. And I think this is where. Uh, sometimes obscurities in this thing that should come out of obscurity. Uh, the Beijing is another issue, as Ambassador Suhan has mentioned, but I think uh, beyond Beijing is how he dealt with the Beijing, uh, the Chinese culture. And in many cases, I mean, while Ambassador Suhan has 
mentioned about that uh, many of, I mean, large portion of Indian establishment may not have a clear understanding of what Bangladesh is and the rise of Bangladesh as a regional economic power. But the problem also lies uh, in Bangladesh and China too, whether we understand each other to a great extent or not. And this is what uh, Ambassador Hermann Dean's points come in. I mean, maneuvering through the cultural or perhaps political economy that the Chinese government <coughs> presented from the view and how to deal with that political economy is, is a major challenge. And even if you look at today's relationship between Bangladesh, uh, I mean, Bangladesh's relationship with Beijing and Washington is largely how we respond to our uh, foreign policy or perhaps our public policy related to economics, related to uh, political uh, choices and related to strategic choices. Now, that's exactly where the foreign ministry may, in future, hearing of this particular book, may have to really invest considerable energy, considerable resources in building capacity, understand each other. And that's, I think, a very important takeaway from this book. I don't go on uh, further decades as ambassadors who aren't have really mentioned many of the issues. Ambassadors of certain brother has mentioned many of the issues. I think another important which I think is my really important point in this book is to build institutional memory. And I think the departments you must go on and come up with a series of institutional memory projects. Uh, based on these experiences. And this is not only to help the diplomats, but there are people who help the diplomats to make the uh, best out of uh, the diplomacy. And uh, perhaps this is something we should have, uh, should encourage in the future. And that calls for a concrete part of this structure in the future. And I think uh, uh, I'm quite sure that it has a strong foreign policy regime well, to part of strengthen uh, this foreign policy regime, maybe it is a great time based on this particular book and the other books that I have read uh, over the past few years, uh, is probably we should look forward to have an articulated, uh, more concrete strategy uh, under the aegis of uh, formulating or perhaps articulated foreign policy that the guide us better uh, on the basis of the experiences such as this one. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Next, we have Dr. Amina Mohsin, professor at Thakri University from the Department of International Relations. Thank you very much. Uh, let me thank the organizers and uh, my heart is congratulations to the uh, author of this book. And I will take it as a conversation between a practitioner and the academia. And when uh, Marut asked me to review the book, he said to me that uh, I should like uh, to see uh, or hear from me how and carry you to look at this book. And let me be very honest about it, that I read the book A to Z. So uh, this is what I was telling Shahabot that I read the entire book. And uh, with that, uh, uh, I mean, I would say that I did find it a very refreshing book in that book. My heart is from the station, the key to you. Uh, and uh, this book, as Shahab was pointing out, it's very really important, uh, I would say, because it comes at the time when Bangladesh is celebrating its 50th year, and Dhaka University is celebrating its 100th year. And we in Dhaka University are at a point where we are constantly talking, consistently and constantly talking about how to build upon a knowledge base of our own. You know, a South Asian knowledge base a homegrown knowledge base. And this book somehow took me away from, I think Shahab was also just to it, from the same department. 
from uh, Hazard University and said to still the message. And I was wondering that you know this one of the books that I can recommend to my students to understand how our diplomat works. And this is where I would urge upon uh, the guarantee of the ambassadors and high commissioners and indeed the advisor to the prime minister sitting over here that you know to let us know, to give us a window uh, that how do uh, diplomats in Bangladesh they work. How do they operate? And uh, this is something I really wanted to ask Faru Subhan for quite some time. That, that our students, we are so much dependent on the Western sources of knowledge that we fail to understand that uh, like the, the difficult terrain that our high commissioners, ambassadors, and foreign policy makers uh, had to walk through. And I, I. I am indeed really grateful to you that you did uh, give me a peek into that difficult journey. And it made me appreciate, you know, like uh, how difficult it is for a diplomat because the time period you cover is also very important and critical, 1970s to the So this is this was the period when Bangladesh was taking off. Uh, the image building. I mean, I had often been in people like the media people always ask you the same question, how is it going to affect the image of the country? And uh, in fact, I had often asked them also, that, why are you so obsessed with the image problem? And going to the book, I did understand that why it is important to have that image issue and where to be that image so that that chance go wrong. Uh, but, uh, and also, but uh, as you rightly point, point out, uh, that integrity, straightforwardness, groundedness, these are essential for a diplomat. And uh, also, uh, you know, like uh, the contributions of a diplomat uh, or the foreign policy makers uh, in the nation building, in the nation crafting uh, process, how it has gone unappreciated. But I think the responsibility lies on the uh, foreign, uh, or the Ministry of Foreign Affairs also uh, to let us know because somehow that terrain remains uh, uh, something very far away. Uh, and uh, that's why I said that let it be an opening of a conversation between the academia and the practitioners. Uh, from our end in the Department of International Relations at Harvard University, we have tried several times uh, to send our students as interns to the MOFA. But somehow, I don't know, I mean, uh, secrecy or whatever it is you may call it, we haven't had very good opportunities at that end. But we did try it at several levels. Uh, but I think now, Haka, Bangladesh has come of A, and 50 years is a good time. It is a grounded time uh, for this kind of interaction where MOFA should also open up its doors to the students of international relations to uh, serve the big terms. That's why I said that this is a book I will be able to recommend to my students to understand what conceptually it means to be a diplomat. Instead of you know borrowing on, uh, on those definitions of uh, Nicholson and Seto, perhaps uh, um, Shahab can add on to the names. It has been a while since I've read the diplomacy. The, uh, the geographical uh, terrain that they uh, cover it is also very interesting. And Ambassador uh, Sohan has rightly pointed out Washington, Germany, Beijing. But these are challenging, challenging areas, and you, uh, very, you were very candid about the challenges you faced. And also the personal initiatives that you have to take. I guess all the diplomats have to take. And the lobby culture. And this is something we, our ears have gotten familiar with, thanks to all the dog shows uh, that we hear in uh, uh, Bangladesh, uh, different channels. The lobby culture. And the Indian media. I mean, uh, the, poor, the, uh, the portrayal of Bangladesh. I don't think that it has stopped. I mean, the kind of uh, media uh, coverage that we get in India that continues. 
And uh, as Ambassador Sohan has pointed out, uh, that may, very few people in India exactly know Bangladesh as it is. Uh, and I think of we in Dhaka University and perhaps Shahab and Jahanginaray University, other public and private universities have both to take a, have to take responsibility for it because India has produced more PhDs on uh, Bangladesh than we have produced in Bangladesh. So that's why uh, you know this book came to me as a very pleasant and I would say a refreshing uh, you know. Uh, add on to my uh, personal library and also something that I can hand over to my uh, students because I have referred to that uh, uh, how the credit aligns itself with the future that is very important. And the time period that you have covered, as I said, that from 1970s uh, till my, uh, mid 90s, um, um, these are important issue areas. Uh, and um, I have a few notes over here, uh, uh, but I won't go into the details of those. Uh, but where I would take a bit, uh, 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 I mean, departure from you is where you write about uh, your experience in uh, in the Netherlands, so the Netherlands countries, and you were able to take a long in France. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, if you, uh, if you look at page 61, uh, the way that a long track problem has been represented, uh, or it has been uh, mentioned over here, I'll beg to differ with you. And uh, I guess uh, some kind of research was required over here. And again, uh, I'm saying this because I take this as a conversation between an academia and the uh, practicing diplomat. And uh, um, this is where, uh, but I do understand the problematics that were involved over there. Uh, but I also understand because this would be used by the students of international relations, by the students, uh, not only international relations, by other students also uh, of the various universities, perhaps. Uh, uh, Re-eating is required, uh, or some kind of research is required over there. And at least with all humility, I would, uh, like I was looking at your references also, because I was asked to look at it as an academic. And perhaps uh, Wikipedia as a source of reference to the problematic one. So uh, these are my few comments. I'm not going to go into the details of it. Uh, because uh, as I said that I do congratulate you, it's a very refreshing book and I found it to be very interesting. But uh, and these are, uh, yeah, I would say all books that they gave. So these are uh, some of the few issues that I would like to take up with you. And with that uh, I conclude and once again I would expect many more books like this here. And uh, from uh, all from the galaxy of the ambassadors and high commissioners and indeed our very own Dr. Bhavad Thank you very much. Thank you, madam. We now have Honorable Mr. Ambassador Madhuti. I request him to say a few words. Assalamualaikum. Excuse me, I am truly overwhelmed and exhilarated by your presence this afternoon, and I thank you for being here. And I am really, as I say when I say that I am overwhelmed and overtaken, is by there is a such a distinguished gathering. The gathering includes academics, senior citizens, diplomats, forward ambassadors, cabinet ministers, politicians, heads of political parties, 
professors, medical practitioners, and poor. My very senior ambassadors are here, Ambassador Pansuban, Ambassador Meethi, uh, former State Minister, Kepelo Gregorian, my uh, colleagues, my uh, contemporaries, uh, and my, also my junior colleagues who later on see the scholar secretaries. We have two over here, Ambassador Paul Suban, Ambassador Shaheen and Ambassador Kauhi was here, I think, in Magnet for the other group. Anyway, so I am truly grateful to all of you for being here. And more happy that the uh, and cabinet ministers come to a function, there is a huge um, um, but in this case, it's not. They are sitting there and nobody is getting no Oh, okay. Why? Because they have come here with experience. Mr. Imran he is my good friend from the university. Gaur is a good friend. And Mangan, calling him a we are the same guys. In fact, we did our ministry together, almost the same day. So that, and then I have my fellow Dr. Lorenzo over here, and my So this makes me, this makes the situation very, very special for me. Uh, the book, which uh, has been reviewed by the New York World Heard About, I must say, let me just share my own views now. Uh, it took its time, well over for about two years, from his period of gestation, to his present form in the period. By this time, I believe that my book is finally being launched. At a very auspicious time. Why I say that? Because we are now, as uh, Professor Mohsen has said, in the morning, that it is being launched at the time we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of our independence, as well as the centenary birth anniversary of the father of the nation. We also are uh, the DDA also is one with and our brave first responders, doctors, nurses are putting out their best efforts. We're going to take a terrible C19 virus and saving lives. And when we are standing on the threshold of a brand new year, hoping for an end the despair and desolation caused by the state of pandemic and the beginning of hope and promise of the future. At the same time, I must also admit that I am overtaken by a sense, if you can also sense in my voice, a nervous stress because I stand before you, I sit before you actually, as an author, which is anything but my own it is not that I did not write a book. Yes, I did. It was 2009. Said by the Muslim. I can discuss it over here. But that was without the fanfare that we are having today. It is quite possible that most of you, or many of you, let me say, have not heard of my dear book, they don't want to read it. So when I think of this, I try to control my Jewish ego. That I because because I am both as an author as well as a diplomat. I remember making a mention in the earlier book, stating that of my resolve never to make another attempt of writing a book. But as you can see, that I've done it. Maybe it's the obscurity factor that allows in me an inexplicable gush of arrogance to write it. The book that has been launched today is basically a narrative of the type of occurrences, happenings, challenges, and opportunities that a diplomat has to encounter and address in the course of his or her professional life. The four very distinguished and accomplished discussions who in their own right stand out for their lessons and being outstanding in their respective fields of expertise have shared with you their assessment candidly and unbiased and i'm genuinely grateful to them for
for taking time of your very busy schedules to read what I wrote and discuss it with you. I am glad that this spoke of your mind, frankly, to highlight the positives as well as pointing out the flaws and the negatives and the shortcomings. Just to add to what they said, I would like to say the diplomatic feats, great, even failures, make headlines, but then there's an element of discrimination in this. The challenges in the job are the same both for the prominent countries as well as those which do not enjoy the limelight or spotlight of the global scene. And these and uh, the encounters at the latter group means the not so prominent ones are mostly unknown and get seen in obscurity. And that's the title of my book. I endeavor to recover some of the anecdotes and experiences in my own literary career to bring into the open the multifaceted challenges we face and the situation that we are put in, albeit in a storytelling form. I am already using a typical diplomatic journal which might intimidate my readers. I hope that this aspect will be an incentive for many of you who are not in the diplomatic life and to do the, fame, to do the publisher a favor and also to me by picking up a copy and taking it home for your Before I close, please allow me to share an anecdote that dates back the 1930s, which I think is a reflection of the perception of diplomats held in Germany. It was in November 1938, the seasoned Italian diplomat, Raphael Guarnier, who was appointed Italy's ambassador to France. While making his farewell call, as we all do, uh, prior to his departure for Paris, he made his farewell call to the foreign minister of Italy at the time, Count Giano. Ambassador Warrior asked the foreign minister Giano, What, what, what ought I try to accomplish in Paris, sir? Mr. Giano's response was rather calm and withdraw. He said, Nothing. Nothing? No, do nothing. Ambassador Warrior obviously was not quite prepared for that, but being the seasoned diplomat that he was, quickly collected himself and said, That will be difficult, sir, but I will do my best. <laughs> the wit and humor of this anecdote notwithstanding, I would like to say that the perception of diplomats of doing nothing while being posted abroad for all probability is still held by many even to this day, but in reality, ladies and gentlemen, doing nothing is most frequently not an option for a human not an And finally, to all of you who have who represents such a wide variety of our society, being journalists, media personalities, academics, political leaders and professionals, I owe you a deep sense of gratitude for coming today to encourage me, to inspire me. I appreciate you. This will be my last ever of writing a book. Thank you very much. Uh, I am the founding chair of U.S. Congressional Advisory Council in Washington, D.C. Farouk and I have worked together to promote Bangladesh in the U.S. Congress. I think those of you who work in the foreign office with you, you know. And we were the first to bring the first congressional delegation from the United States Congress to Bangladesh. So, good luck to all of you, and I applaud your sister. Thank you for coming. So, I know, I know Shamaru, what is your name? Maru's younger sister Shamaru has given, she lives in Washington DC, she has given nine years of her time as a volunteer to promote Bangladesh's image in the United States. 
for one round of applause for Hamaru Kassel. And to you, you young lady, I have to say, your parents have made for you so well. God bless your parents. Looking for uh, being very patient and very cooperative uh, with the publishing process. Um, um, and, you know, the copy editing and every little, you know, uh, the questions and queries we receive from the copy editor and, and you know, addressing those um, every little uh, way. And, of course, uh, 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 Professor Shahab Imam Khan has uh, been a very active part of assisting this process, which was uh, also, you know, we're grateful to him for that. Um, of course, uh, honorable ministers and uh, but thank you for being here, um, and you know we, we couldn't have wished for a more distinguished audience today. So, uh, and the credit goes to Ambassador Mahmoudi and his due to his work and his uh, friendship and his long lifelong uh, achievements that have connected all of you with his work and his life. And uh, through that, it has connected uh, all of us, uh, all of you, uh, to us. Uh, uh, and of course, we are here gathered today at the Rewarding Club, and this has been possible uh, thanks to Mr. Jay Gazin, who is the founder president of the, of the club, and he has very uh, generously offered the premises, and uh, you know, uh, this, is, this is lovely. I didn't know that this, this place existed, and uh, you know, uh, we, are, we are very glad that we could, we could host it here, and thank you, uh, Mr. Gazin, for being able to for us. And hopefully we'll have other events here for the club members. And I've also been asked to be an associate member as, as a student of Holy Cross. So uh, thank you for, the, for that for that invitation. Um, distinguished guests, uh, we are uh, you know uh, we will of course uh, you know I'm, I'm remembering my my father today. If he, he had been here, he would be um, he would be very proud and you know. I almost feel like he is here listening to the, uh, the comments you made. And uh, we're very grateful that the book has been um, dedicated to him. And uh, I think I'll just echo uh, the comments that he discussed with me that, you know, uh, all of you, I think, who have had a long uh, journey with the diplomatic core um, and also your. Uh, lifelong experience with the service, and it's very important, like I want to basically highlight what Professor Amin was saying, that even after so many years, we don't have homegrown knowledge for students to uh, learn from. So uh, both the academics, I'm sure, uh, feel the dearth of that. And I'm, I'm, I'm truly glad that you find this book to be, uh, you know, potentially useful for students, because Going forward, we need materials like this, and of course, uh, Ambassador Farouk Suman, uh, please don't hold off on your memoir. I, I would, you know, uh, earnestly request you to, you know, start writing it, and uh, you know, we would love to have that uh, very soon from you. Um, and uh, I would also like to highlight that you know, not just in in, uh, in English, but uh, there is a very wide readership in Bangladesh, and we are publishing more and more in Bangladesh. There is uh, you know, deep interest in the Bangladeshi audience um, for having books of this nature available, and also for students. Um, I'm sure there are you know, other academics in the audience and on stage who would agree that uh, you know, if we have academic texts available in Bangla, uh, we will have better uh, students contributing not in the, not just the service but also um, in, in in the academic field. Uh, lastly, I would want to thank our uh, distinguished discussants. Uh, thank you all for uh, taking the time to read the book very closely and reflect on uh, the book. And um, also, uh, maybe you know, some of the comments we can address in the second edition of the book, if, if, uh, if Ambassador might be so wishes. And uh, my team at UBA, they have been wonderful. Um, for all the, you know, the editorial members and the marketing people and uh, sales people, you know, we, we work in the background, but they've been absolutely fantastic. And uh, you know, they're here on uh, Christmas Day, and they're holidays. So thank you. Thank you.
to my team and uh, uh, the book designer, the cover designer, who's you know taking snaps and hiding in, you know, in obscurity. <laughs> Thank you. We have received a very good uh, appreciation for the cover. Um, so uh, with that, I, I want to you know thank you, all all of you, and um, we have a, a few small uh, token of appreciation for the discussants, and um, we have uh, some refreshments for um, to wrap up the evening. Thank you. Uh, thank you again for for being with us today, and uh, hopefully we will you know we will have you with us in our journey. Uh, of publishing more academic titles. Thank you.